Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Before we get into the video guys, as always, a massive thank you and a shout out to James Welsh, Basic Terra, Cole, Zan, Clone13, Fuzel CC, Jet Simon, Olivier Bernier, Artur Wajaz, Retro Galaxy, Fan Van, Amari Lewis, Endmark Games, Matt and Seth Koble for supporting my game dev journey. I hope you're enjoying the Patreon benefits. If you want to get access to pixel art tile sets, royalty free music on a monthly basis, there is a link in the description. You can check out the tiers on offer. Hey guys, welcome back to the Castlevania tutorial series. Let's take a look at the actual game and see what we're going to add in today. So I want to add in some candlesticks that break and drop items. And we're also going to add in that jump animation where he tucks his knees up when he jumps. Just like that. If we're adding heart pickups, we're going to need a HUD. So we're going to start putting that together today as well. So first things first. Let's create a HUD layer. Now, if I take the show grid off, you can see this dotted line here, which is just this left hand section of the layout. This is the screen and our HUD is going to want to sit pretty much at the top there. So if we look at the NES version, it's just black and it drops down maybe one, two, two or three tiles. So let's go ahead and create that. So on the layers, in the layers panel, right click, add a layer to the top. And I'm going to put um, the name HUD in capitals. And I like to put any layer that's on a zero parallax. So any layer that's not going to move, I like to put it in capital letters just so that I recognize it immediately when I look at the layers, uh, the layers panel there. So click on the HUD layer, change the parallax on the left to zero and zero. So it's not going to move and let's double click and add our first sprite. And this is going to be a tiled background. It's going to be 16 by 16 because that's what the game's dimensions are. And it's going to be just almost black. So you can see I've got this kind of blue color selected here. I want it to be almost black, but not quite. I don't like harsh blacks and harsh, uh, too harsh whites if I can help it. Now I'm going to just shrink this down. Now I'm going to change my grid size to 16 by 16. Turn it back on. Just so I can make sure that I'm snapping that in. And I don't know if that's going to be too big. That's pretty big. Let's bring it down to two 16 by 16 tiles. There we go. And there's the HUD that's going to sit at the top of the screen there. And it's not going to move. You can see that it's only as wide as this dotted line. But no matter where we go on screen, it stays the width of the screen, which is exactly what we want. In fact, let me just go up the stairs here. Yeah, we can kind of jump into that HUD, which is not exactly what we want. So I think, I think I'm going to make it one and put all of our information up there. And I may even reduce the jump strength. I've put the player at this end, by the way, for testing. If you're wondering where he was, let's put him back at the beginning. Um, I'm going to change the jump strength on this to 300 rather than 350. Oh, and if we're bringing the player back, we need to bring the camera back to, it doesn't matter how high you put the camera. I had it at the top there, but it doesn't really matter. But now we can't jump over the blocks. So that is not gonna work. Let's change the jump strength to 320. See if that works. Yep, yeah, and that works. Just fine. What I think I will do just to be safe rather than sorry is drop everything down by one. I want to select everything, even the HUD, just draw a box around everything, just drop it down by one. And then I'm going to pop the HUD back up 
And I think I'm going to put the jump strength on the box back to 350. Just because I think I preferred the height on it. And that should be that should be it. Yeah, that works. That works fine. Now let's get ahead and add in that jump animation because at the moment he just jumps and he's in the walking uh, animation, which is no good. So let's go to the walk animation. Let's right click. Let's duplicate that. I'm going to rename it to jump. And we're going to go down and get these frames. And I'm going to delete them all except the first one. And when he jumps, I want his elbow, I want his arm to come up a little bit. And back a little bit to there. I'm going to select that white and just drag it down. Again, not doubling up on the pixels there. I'll just color in the bottoms and just realign all of that. If I drag that up under walk, you can see I've just changed the arm. Uh, I don't want to bring it forward. I think it's fine. Um, I do need to bring the legs up because if you look when he's jumping in the original, the legs come up and he's like in a crouching stance. So maybe we can just reuse the crouch animation. But I don't really like to do that. I want it to be its own animation. I think I'm just going to bring the knees up. Although it's just going to be the foot to there. And the front foot to there. Let's just take out the doubles. Get rid of that one as well. Bring the white down. And I think I think I'm going to take all of that through as if he's kind of got his back knee right down in front and take it up one I think there let's try that I'm going to select him I'm going to bring him down to the bottom it's like a crouch, I suppose. That is pretty much the same. I've changed my mind. Let's delete the jump animation and just duplicate the crouch. And we'll call that jump. We don't need it to be two frames, just the one frame is fine. Now, when we go back to the player events under player controls, when we push W, we are going to simulate jump and we're going to set the state. If I copy that and drag it out and double click and change the state to jump. And that's not going to do anything right now because we haven't assigned a state to the animation, but we are changing the state when we push W. And now we can come down into states under movement. And again, I'm going to copy out the crouch just by select, selecting the end, control C and V. And I'm going to change that to jump. So it's reading now that if the state equals jump, then the player animation is going to be set to jump. And it's not working because we probably have a confliction. Okay, it's when we push W, it sets it to jump. 
So we push W, then we let go, and it and it goes back to not being jump. So let's take that out. Control X on the keyboard just to, to cut it. And then what I'm going to do down here under movement is I'm going to add an event and I'm going to say play a bass and then I'm going to say is jumping and that's where I'm going to put the set state to jump <laughs> and it's still not working <clears throat> And I think it's because we've got this here that will automatically set it to idle if none of that is true. So we need to add in that condition of jumping here now. So let's copy and paste the state crouch, double click, type jump in there. There we go. So he's going into that jump animation now, but he's not doing it if we're jumping forwards. And when we land, we're staying in that jump animation. So what we need to do back down here, like we said, when with this condition that says if we're jumping, set it to jump, copy and paste that out, double click into the first bit. And then we need to come down on here and say under the platform animation triggers on landed, on landed, we need to set the animation back to idle. And now that should solve, yeah, that should solve the jumping issue. So now we're good, we can jump in the air. But we can no longer attack in the air. And we are not uh, jumping forwards in that animation. So let's fix that. So we're going to go back up to our control group here. And if A is down, sorry, if A is down and S is not down, we need to go to on W pressed, if not attacking. Then we can jump. Let's also get this state not equal to jump. Copy and drag it up by holding control into on W pressed. Because that is going to be true. If we press W, we only want to jump if we're not jumping already. And here is where we need to add it again. Again, select it, hold down control, drag it up to if D is down and drag it up again. to the next one because we want it to be true when we're on the stairs and we're not drag it up again and drag it up again and what that's basically going to say is before we were having it that if a is down and s is not down we're not attacking stairs or crouch then we could walk left and right but i don't want to play the walk left and right if we're jumping so we will play left and right here but now when we jump it only plays the jump animation but it's created this weird situation where it stops us moving forwards. And the fix is uh, to, or the fix that I'm thinking of is to just copy this block here and paste it down again and change this one to true. And then delete this and do the same. But let's put a comment above this that says moving dash jumping. So we know why there's a duplicate block there. Same here with this one, copy and paste it out, and we can say on stairs jumping, change that one to true, get rid of, uh, in fact, no, we don't need to worry about that one, because that's being on the stairs, oh, which one did I delete? Oh, I just, I did delete the right one, I just didn't delete the comment. This is the one we need to cop copy, the one that says the state. Copy and paste it, delete state, change jumping to true. And on the stairs, we shouldn't need to worry about. So that should be everything we need. I'm going to copy this comment out and drag it down to that one. 
where the statement says is jump is true and that should that should there we go solve our issues so if we hold down jump as soon as we land we're back into walking we can crouch we can jump in the air now the next issue we need to fix is the whip we can whip just fine if we're crouching or if we're walking if we jump we glitch out and then when we land we can't do anything so let's fix that now the reason we can't whip in the air is because we've added in a new state called jump and we've so we've told the system that when we jump or when where is it when the here we go when the player is jumping set the state to jump and obviously if we try and press the attack button in the air it's going to change our it's going to try and change our state to whip but it's going to conflict with is jumping because two things are going to be trying to be true at the same time which is we are jumping and we are attacking so the simple fix to that is just to select this little section here push c on the keyboard and let's add a condition that says system and we're going to compare the variable of the state and we're going to type in whip and we're going to invert it so if state does not equal whip then uh, then we then we can change it to jump so that means as soon as we, if we're jumping as soon as we attack in the air it'll set the animation to whip but The problem is, he's kind of landing too quickly. Or well, the whip animation is too slow. And also, when we land, it puts us into a freeze. And that's because we the system doesn't know what state we're in when we land in the attack state, uh, if we're attacking. So if I just put, if, if state does not equal to whip on that one where it says where we land, hoping that should be enough to fix it which it is um great okay that works that works fine i just try like to test it quite vigorously just to make sure there's no bugs i just feel like the the whip it should be faster so let's go and just change the speed of that quickly double click into the player click on the whip animation i'm going to change the speed from 10 to 15 which is quite a significant jump it's 50 percent there we go now we're whipping now we're whipping much faster yeah okay good we can jump we can whip we can jump straight we can jump forward we can attack in the air if we're jumping we can walk upstairs we can walk downstairs we can drop through stairs I can jump off stairs. Okay, we're coming together. Now we need to add some candlesticks. Let's go back to the player layer. Double, uh, right click, add a layer to the top. I'm going to call this one objects because I want the objects to be on a different layer to the player. Drag it down under the HUD. Parallax is 100%. And let's double click and we're going to add a sprite. And this sprite, as you may have guessed it, is going to be 16 by 16 the image point is going to be in the middle so now we can stick these candlesticks around the layer now let's have a look and see what they look like so they're doubles in the game which is fine so let's do something similar start with a white I'm going to draw the bases and then the candlesticks themselves are going to be a kind of browny color. Uh, they're, they're a white color actually. I've got it the wrong way around. The bases are going to be brown. Candlesticks are going to be white. Though I kind of want them to be double size. So I'm going to move that one out one more. And move that one out one more. 
and I'm just going to bring those in a tad and then the flame we're going to animate so I'm just going to start with those two I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to change that one and that one I'm going to do it again I'm going to delete those put that one over there put that one there duplicate the the second one and drag it out so I've got the four frames of animation there I want to stick it on a repeat on a loop at 10 I don't like it at all so let's put three in there I think they need to be more random that's better a little bit more random but I don't like how fast it is so let's bring it down to five we also need to add in some yellow so I'll put in a yellow one at the bottom there the yellow one up there back in at the bottom there and there That's not too bad, except I don't like these coming in too far in. I feel like they should stay within their twos. It's better. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, you can play around with yours. Right. Create the base of those just a little bit darker. And I'm going to come up. And let's play. Now we can see there are some candles on the wall. In fact, go back in, let's take that yellow, let's go a slightly shaded color and just draw a slight shade along that side and that side and that side and that side and our shade at the bottom needs to go on all of them as well. And also because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I'm going to go a darker tone again and I'm just going to go to the left at the bottom there just to give it a bit of form and that's it that's a little bit better I'm, I can live with that for now we probably will change it later but there's our candles now we need to make them destructible and uh, we need to make them drop a pickup when we attack them so Let's give them a name. Let's call them candles. And what, do the, what does it look like when, we, when it happens in the original game? Let's just take a look. Okay, so there's a bit of a particle effect. So let's create another particle effect for the objects layer. Have we created one already? We did for the blocks over there. So that's okay. Let's double click. Let's create another particle effect. These are little stars that kind of twinkle when we destroy things. So let's make them eight by eight. And they're kind of red, I think. Uh, that's a terrible, terrible shape. Let's try again. Let's go with that orange color. Let's start with a cross. In fact, let's just let's just keep it like that for now. I'm gonna give it a yellow. Let's 
the yellow outline. Yeah, it's fine there. I'll just give it a bit of shading. Just highlight the top just ever so slightly and just a little bit of darkness at the bottom there just to give it a bit of form. Um, and this one is going to be various sizes and it's going to be a one shot. So if we come over to the properties on the left, change continuous spray to one shot. You can check it out as it is right now. It looks nothing like what we want. We want a 360 spray cone for one. Uh, the rate's going to be something like 10, maybe even less. The speed is going to be a lot slower, 50. The size is eight by eight, but we want a grow rate of minus two. We want to get smaller as it breaks. And the reason it's doing that thing where it goes out and comes back in is because the acceleration is minus 150. We don't want that. We do want gravity to be involved. So let's put that at 500. Not quite 500, maybe 100. That's a bit better. Uh, we'll fade them to invisible after 0.5 seconds. Acceleration will be fine. Angle randomizer, fine. Speed randomizer, 500. X randomizer 10, Y 10, just to give them a bit of variety in where they spawn. Size randomizer will do five. So there'll be different sizes. Fine rate, I think I'll drop down to five as well. Yeah, I kind of like that, but I'm not sure about the gravity anymore. And I don't even think about the X and Y randomizers. I think we'll start them right in the middle. And we're going to fade them to, in fact, we'll do timeout expire after 0 0.3. And grow rate minus 5. No, more than that, minus eight. That's it. Now they're getting smaller as they go out. Let's go minus 15. That's better. And it's like they're disappearing by getting smaller rather than invisible. Uh, I'm gonna start the size at 10. That's better. I'm happy with that. Feel free to play around with yours as long as you want now let's go back to the events uh, let's organize let's minimize some of these groups here destructibles that's where we're going to put it so we're going to copy this entire block and uh, we're going to change this first section which says on collision with sprite which we need to change to the actual name and we're going to change this to the new particles uh, no not the new particles sorry the candles on collision with candles, we're going to say candles. So I go back. We're going to say candles and we're going to spawn another object and the object's going to be the particles. And this is where we can put it on the correct layer. So instead of layer zero, we're going to put on layer objects at image point zero. And then we're going to destroy the candles. So now we can destroy these. If I just put a few out here. One, two, three, and a nice little particle effect to show we've destroyed them, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Now we need them to drop some pickups. So let's start with a heart. Now, how does the health look? in the game so we've got it in little bars here so we can recreate that that's not a problem so let's do that now let's go back to the hud layer double click and let's create a tile background let's make this one eight by eight and this is where we're going to add our health so we're going to get a nice red color i'm going to draw a line down i'm going to make it two and i'm actually going to shrink the width of this from eight down to five in fact, down to f down to three. I basically want the edge of it 
to be on the left and I want a, a blank space to the right of it and you'll see why when we tile it. Um, let's just go ahead and make the left hand side of it slightly darker just for shade. Let's change the grid size to 8x8 eight eight, so I can shrink it down and pop it in at the top there. Now it's important to note where the image point is on this one. The default for the tile backgrounds is the top left. So you can see it spins around that axis. That's exactly where we want it. The text over here says player. So we're going to add that in as well. And we're going to get some fancier text later on. But for now, let's just double click. Make sure we're still on the HUD layer. And I'm going to change that to say player. And we're going to make it white. Shrink that box down because that is way too big. And the size, in fact, the font, let's just pick another font for now. Let's just pick Century Gothic. You can pick whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's shrink that down to eight. Probably even smaller. Six. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to need to change the grid size to 4x4 four four, just so I can get it in the right place. And you see I've got the box there. If I bring it up too far, it cuts off the bottom of the text. So I'm going to go ahead to the, to the horizontal and vertical alignment. On vertical alignment, I'm going to select center, which will then put it in the center of the text. And if I push play now, you'll see it's at the top left there with my health bar. I'm going to go ahead and rename this tile background to health bar. And I'm going to rename the text to txt underscore generic. And I always call my generic text just generic if I want to reuse it again. There's not going to be anything specific about it. Um, let's go back to the game. And they've got 16 little health bars there. And so do we, 16 and 16. I did notice that this is in capital letters, so let's just change ours to capital letters as well. Move that across one, and there we go. We've got the makings of our HUD. We've got the health bar there. We've got the candles. And what the candles are gonna do is they're gonna, they, when we attack them, they're gonna spawn an object as in the original game. And in the next episode, we're gonna add those hearts in and I'm going to show you how to make them fall down the screen in a wavy motion and when we collect them it's going to affect how much health we have. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for sticking around if you've made it this far and if you found any of this content useful or if you want to see me continue making these tutorial series then please do me a favor and hit the like button. It really does help get the video out to more people who might want to watch it and if you haven't already done so please consider subscribing for more videos and more tutorial series like this in the future.